This is the video lecture for the Rainfall Kinetic Energy lesson plan. It was created by Justin Wiseman and edited and narrated by Sean Krupa. This video and accompanying lesson plan are part of Ohio University's Boat of Knowledge in the Science classroom, funded by the National Science Foundation. What does a raindrop look like? Take a few seconds to come up with your answer or draw it on a sheet of paper. If you answered that a raindrop has the teardrop shape that most of us are familiar with, you'd be wrong. In reality, a raindrop has a much more complicated shape, and that shape is dependent upon the raindrop size. Small raindrops are approximately spherical, but as they get larger, they start to look kidney-shaped. Eventually, they get so large that they break and form two smaller drops, and the process starts over again. Let's talk about factors that affect a raindrop shape. The first is the surface tension of the water. You can think of the surface tension of water as a kind of skin that forms the raindrop shape, much like a water balloon. Next is air resistance. Air resistance is a type of friction. The faster the drop falls, the harder the air pushes back on it. At some point, the drop will be traveling so fast that the force of gravity pulling it down will be equal to the air resistance or the force of the air pushing it back up. At this point, the drop no longer accelerates and its velocity remains constant, as large as it can be. This is called the terminal velocity. Let's do some raindrop physics. Falling raindrop has kinetic energy. We know that kinetic energy is equal to one half mv squared. We also know that mechanical energy is conserved. What happens to a raindrop's kinetic energy when it hits the ground? Take a few moments to answer this question. You can pause this video until you're ready to resume. If you answer that the ground absorbs the impact and or that the ground is deformed, you're correct. Now let's do an example. What is the kinetic energy of a spherical raindrop two millimeters in radius, falling at 10 meters per second. 10 meters per second is about the terminal velocity for a raindrop this size. You'll need to know that the density of water is equal to 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. First, we need the mass of the drop. We know that density is equal to m over v. Rearranging, we can solve for the mass by multiplying the volume times the density. The volume of the drop is the volume of a sphere with radius 2 millimeters. That's 4 thirds times pi times r cubed. We get a volume of the drop of 3.35 times 10 to the minus 8 meters cubed. Save this number because we'll need it later on in the video. The mass of the drop is then equal to the volume that we just calculated multiplied by the density we get a mass of 3.35 times 10 to the minus 5 kilograms. We can now calculate the energy of the drop by applying our formula for kinetic energy. This works out to 1.675 times 10 to the minus 3 joules. You may be asking why raindrop physics and raindrop kinetic energy matters. The answer is erosion. We said that the energy in a raindrop is transferred to the ground and that the ground is then deformed. More on this to come. We also just showed that one drop has a small amount of energy, but a rainstorm has lots of drops, and erosion happens over long time scales, or many storms. Can we estimate the energy in all of Ohio's rainfall for a given year? Let's try. Looking online, you can find that Ohio receives an average of 1.024 times 10 to the 11 cubic meters of rain per year on average. To go any further, we need to make some assumptions. Let's assume that all drops are equal size, and let's keep the 2 millimeter radius we used from the previous example. We'll also assume, that again, that the drops fall at 10 meters per second. Remember our single raindrop example answers the volume, and the energy. To start, we need the total number of drops. If we take the total volume of rain and divide it by the volume of one raindrop, 
we get a staggering 3.06 times 10 to the 18 drops of rain per year. To get the total energy, we take the energy per drop and multiply it by the number of drops that we just calculated. This works out to 5.13 times 10 to the 15 joules of energy. 5.13 times 10 to the 15 is obviously a large number, but just how big is it? Let's give some examples to appreciate the scale of this much energy. The atomic bombs used in World War II have an approximate energy output of 6.7 times 10 to the 13 joules. This means that the atomic bombs used in World War II had 76 times less energy than the energy in Ohio's annual rainfall. Here's another example. You can estimate the weight of Mount Everest to be somewhere between 10 to the 16 and 10 to the 17 newtons. Remember that one joule is defined as being the energy needed to move one newton a distance of one meter. Therefore, the energy in Ohio's annual rainfall could lift the entirety of Mount Everest off the ground by a distance of somewhere between 5 and 50 centimeters. We're now ready to do the raindrop impact activity. The goal of this activity is to simulate rainfall deforming the ground by dropping spherical objects and observing the results. You'll need the following materials, a rectangular container, enough sand to fill the container by a few inches, a meter stick plus one ruler or a set of calipers, at least one golf ball and one ping pong ball, but optionally you can do marbles as well. Before you begin, create a data table. The leftmost column should be the drop height, while the middle columns should be the crater depth in centimeters for each object you wish to test. Finally, include a column on the right for your notes and observations for each trial. Before you begin, measure the mass of all objects being tested and record. Make predictions about the different objects. Also make predictions about dropping the objects from different heights. Here's the procedure for the activity. Start by filling an aluminum or another container with 1 to 2 inches of sand. For reference, place the container against the wall. Using a meter stick, measure heights of 5, 10, 20, 50, 100, and 150 centimeters above the level of the sand. For convenience, you can mark these heights with pencil or tape. Gently place the object you wish to test on the sand and record if any crater is formed. This is your control. In other words, this represents what happens when you drop from a height of zero centimeters. Drop the impacts from each height and measure the depth of the impact crater. Be sure to record any observations you have as you go. For the best and most precise results, perform multiple trials with each object. Here are some tips to help with the procedure. Try to perform the activity inside, or if you have to perform it outside, do your best to shield yourself from wind. When you're measuring the crater depths, be sure to do so carefully so as not to disturb the sand. Multiple trials will improve the precision of your measurements, and working in teams will help with efficiency. This is what a sample data set looks like. Notice the notes on the side. Your notes should look like this, but not be identical to these notes. Here are some sample observations. The golf ball crater kept increasing in depth as the heights increased. The ping pong ball crater barely changed, if at all, as the height increased. The golf ball's crater had a more complex shape it looked like a crater within another crater. And the ping pong ball formed a shallow, simple crater. When performing your analysis, plot the crater depth on the y-axis versus the drop height in centimeters for each object on the x-axis. Draw conclusions from your observations and analysis. Can you say anything about the difference between objects? maybe in terms of their mass or terminal velocity? You should also try to answer which object you think is better for simulating a raindrop and why. 
There's no right answer or wrong answer to this question. Here are some take-home points. Raindrops carry kinetic energy. When they hit the ground, that kinetic energy is transferred to the ground and the ground is then deformed. Lots of drops over long periods of time have enough energy to drastically change landscapes. We call this erosion. Finally, we performed an activity to simulate the effect of raindrops falling and deforming the ground. This concludes the video lecture for the Rainfall Kinetic Energy Lesson Plan. Thanks for your attention.